Hi everyone, my name is Sue. Today I would like to talk about how to get approval from different people using authority matrix. Before I get started, let's talk about what is authority matrix and when do we use it. So basically it is a decision table. We use it when we need to obtain approvals from people in different developed team. For example here, in this challenge, In this challenge, we would like to get approval from manager, director, and a compliance officer. Obviously, they do not belong to the same group. Based on the vendor's name, for example, if the vendor's name is TAA, we want this case to be routed to the manager and the compliance officer. If the vendor's name is not TAA, we want this task to be routed to manager and the director. So no matter what the vendor's name is, it has to be approved by the manager first. So in this video, I will walk you guys through each step and complete this challenge together. Let's get into it. First thing first, we go to Dev Studio and open the case type. After we collect vendor's information, we want to add the approval or reject step. As you can see here on the right panel, it's asking us what flow type we're we going to use. Because this challenge involves multiple approvers, we want to use cascading instead of a specific user. And the difference between reporting structure and authority matrix is that the first one is all about a user and user's direct manager in a higher position, which I will talk about in another video. But in our challenge, we want it to be a little bit more flexible because like the manager, director, and the compliance officer, they are not in the same developed team. They are outside of the reporting structure. I'm going to create a decision table called Sue. This is what a decision table should look like by default. If you compare this one and the one in our challenge, you can probably tell there's a difference between these two. In our challenge, it has when, when, otherwise, but in this default decision table, it's just if, otherwise. So in the challenge, it actually evaluate all the conditions from the top to the end, and you will do the action as long as the condition applies. In our case, by default, you will only return to one action. All we need to do is to evaluate all rows. So you want to go to Result and uh, click this checkbox. When you go back, you can see it's already changed to when, when, otherwise. The next step is to configure conditions and actions. Let's click here. It's asking us which property we want to test or we want to compare because we want it to compare the vendor's name to TAA. So under the property, we are going to put vendor name. Now for the actions, Pekka Academy actually makes the challenge a little bit more simpler. So a lot of stuff have already provided for us, but in this video, I wanted to do everything from scratch. Go to our app explorer. We wanted to create a new property.
to contain all of our approval ID. So I'm going to call this property sue approvals list. The type of this property is not text. We have to change it to a page list because it contains a list of approve because it contains a list of approvers. And the page definition is also under the same class. Under work. And because we're not referring this page list to a data page that's already existed, and we're not copying data from another p data page, so leave this data access as manual. Now let's go back to our decision table. and uh, put the approvals list under the property. Since the list right now is empty, we want to copy and paste the approvals ID to this list. That's why we are using append which means copy and paste to the end. If you have a person to route case to, no matter what condition it is, then you want to leave this box blank. Because what that does is saying no matter what condition is, we will always go to this person. In this case, we are going to use manager. When the vendor's name is equal to TAA, we want it to route it to compliance officer. We need to insert another row after. Say if the vendor's name not equal to TAA, want this to be approved by manager and uh, director. Actually, before we hit save, we probably want to check if there's any conflicts. They'll so say, OK. This is good. It says decision table is consistent. That's good. Let's save again. Now we have the decision table created, which is Sue decision table. It's asking for the page list property, which is what we created. Um, I named it Sue approvals list. It's right here. And for the approver property is the approver ID. Okay, that's it. Let's save and run. Vendor name is equal to TAA. See who he's going to route to. Now we run into an issue. Let's take a look of what the issue is. It says no routing information was provided for this assignment. Pekka doesn't know who he should route it to. In our decision table, we put manager there. Pekka should know, but why it doesn't? Well, here's one way to check. You want to click the gear button and then go to the org and a security. So this 
are all the operators stored in Pega in this organization. And uh, we want it to route it to manager. Instead of using the full name, we're supposed to use operator ID, which is manager at gogo road. Let me copy that. The same thing here. Compliance officer. What's the operator ID for a compliance officer? Okay. I want to save it. Now we want to create a new case. See if that fix our still try TAA. Submit. See, now the problem is fixed. We can go to the actions and click approval. And the first person here is the manager, which is exactly what we're looking for. We click approve. The next person we're going to route it to should be compliance officer. And you can see here, it is the right person. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you.